Greetings everybody, today we will talk about one of the biggest and unpredictable failures of Mercedes R-Class. When R-Class was in production, environment in Daimler Chrysler was more toxic than in any university that teaches gender identity. Mercedes had Smart that was losing money, Mercedes had Maybach that was losing massive amount of money, Chrysler was eating chunk of their profits, head of Mercedes Mr. Jürgen Schremp was leaving the company as the Eckhart Cordes. And in this crazy and unsustainable situation, R-Class was conceived. But managers of Mercedes had great confidence in R-Class. They saw it like a new profitable segment that they will lead for decades. All the functions that managers wanted in R-Class were impossible to create in one vehicle. Managers saw it as a spacious MPV that must have sedan handling, feel like a luxurious S-Class, and must be tall, have four-wheel drive, can handle like a slight off-road action, all of that must go fast. Selling targets was at least 50,000 a year. 2002 Mercedes introduced their GST concept to like the general public. And people really did not understand the purpose of this creation. And anyway, Mercedes continued their wonderful project. And in 2005, Mercedes dealership revealed the new R-Class to the world. First year was not good, approximately 6,000 units were sold worldwide. Second year was uh, better, approximately 36,000 units were sold worldwide. And that was the best year. Since the second year, sales dropped dramatically each year. And in 2013, Mercedes decided to discontinue the I-Class. Ambition selling of 50,000 a year were never achieved, so... In 2015, production of R-Class was moved from Mercedes Alabama to AM General, the original creator of Hammer H1. They made R-Class with the long wheel base and sold it in Chinese market. This is the first time a foreign car maker has utilized an American-owned manufacturer to build their vehicles here in the United States. AM General Commercial President Howard Glazer says the deal is unique to the auto industry. We're building luxury German-engineered vehicles in Indiana, exclusively for export to China, built by the oldest UAW local in the country. That's the entire global economy right in one. And in China, yearly sales were not so bad. 10,000 to 15,000 each year. Until 2017, they were selling and uh, every Chinese customer was happy because they loved the big Mercedes with the big legroom. But in general, even with this Chinese move, R-Class was a, well, big failure, unfortunately. Even the crazy AMG version, the 6.3 V8 that are more rare than SLR McLaren and other hypercars did not help the sales. In total, about 250 AMG worldwide were created and sold. Also, Brabus made their version of the Air Class with 6.1 liter V that they called the R500. It developed 445 brake horsepower and 590 Nm of torque. 100 km happened in 5.9 seconds, which is much slower than the standard AMG 6.3 R Class. But Brabus looked a little bit more aggressive and also they tuned diesel version. Big question today is why the Air Class did not make it. It had everything you wanted. Air suspension, six comfortable seats, all-wheel drive, panoramic roof, good Mercedes in the air. Almost all the functions you can get in the S Class. If you paid enough, you could order real expensive leather. Also, it had DVD player with excellent sound system. And nobody was offering such luxury in this shaped vehicle. And in my opinion, even I think today nobody is offering that. I strongly believe that the biggest problems were the self-identity of the car and general appearance of the car. From the start, engineers wanted too much from it. No car can be everything in once. Toasty! Sorry, no MPV can be everything in once. Price was the same as any Mercedes with all that features, and suddenly customers did not see value in it. And the looks of the looks were horrible. The car was ugly from every angle. The car came out one of the ugliest Mercedes products during that era. It was so ugly that if you tell this car jokes about your mama, it will not be funny, it will be just sad. And even after the restyling, it was like okay, you could look at it without feeling vomit in your mouth. But every time you look at it, uh, 
you still have this like version of preface the ugly version in you and it just reminded of you and just felt bad unfortunately nobody understood it nobody bought it and nobody loved it mpv is very simple product you cannot overcomplicate it because people will not see value in it the good example of simple mpv is nissan la festa not fast not luxurious but is one of the most practical mpvs i have ever seen it is small outside, it is big inside, it has every feature you ever needed, almost had like 360 camera, had all the cup holders ever needed, the materials were practical, I mean the car felt good. Mercedes had the opportunity to copy that and do the same thing, but they cannot make such a cheap product because they will lose their brand value. So initially I think it was a big mistake to go into that market with their huge and expensive badge. Today, on the second hand market, this car is a bargain. If you will find R-Class that had all its fluids changed on time, transmission oil was changed every 60,000 kilometers, cooling was changed and the radiator was cleaned, and it will have the full service history and all also, if it will have fixed air suspension, then buy it immediately. It will bring joy to your family. And if you find V8 version, it will bring smile and joy to your face. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the air class, why did it fail. Also, I noticed that many of you watch my video without subscribing. And that's very creepy. So stop being creepy and subscribe to my channel. Take care and bye-bye.